is Kai Su Hui. I'm an NSFIU scholar and I'm from Lavadia Community College. My project is about analysis of snow melt over mountain glacier in high mountain areas using satellite level sensing. So how are glaciers found? Glaciers are found when snow is turned into ice because more snow has fallen into it and compressed it into hard ice. So why is glacier important? Glaciers are important indicator for global warming and climate changing. Glacier melting can also affect the ecosystem of river, hydropower, fishery, and it can also affect the billions of people who depend on the streams in high mountain Asia, which is Himalaya region, which is Nepal, uh, India, China, Bhutan, and Myanmar. So our project study the relationship between soil moisture and temperature and seasonal snow freeze dormant cycle. Because soil moisture and temperature is key factor to predict and estimate the seasonal freeze dormant cycle. Project objectives are to obtain accurate soil moisture and temperature observation for validation of satellite data and also to help predict the seasonal freeze storm map stage which can, which can help to study how climate change is affecting at different locations. Also, this can also help to improve the future climate modeling. So for methodology, we have three data sources, which is NASA, TBE, and European Space Agency. TBE is called Dark Hole Environmental Database, which provides soil moisture and temperature data from Chinese network stations over Tibet template too. And also we obtain the data from NASA ASCAP Matop A and Matop B satellites. We obtain daily snow freeze thaw data. So we compare the daily freeze thaw data from NASA and swine water and temperature data from TBE together. In the future, we will also be comparing the NASA ASCAP data with the snow map data from European Space Agency Center Center One Satellites. So if we look at the map, these are the map for the Chinese network station. They have three major network, which is Naru network in cold semi arid climate, Maku network in cold humid climate, and Magri network in cold arid climate. So they have like total of forty five stations. So each station consists of fifteen to twenty five stations. So if we look at the graph, and that's zero six is one of the stations that to be in that one, uh, which is elevation, uh, which has elevation of 3,428 feet, and the land cover is grass. The elevations and land cover is really important because soil moisture and temperature can be different based on the elevation, land cover, and location topography. So we plot the time series from 2012 to 2016 by using the MATLAB. So if we look at the graph. The blue line represents the swine temperature, and the orange represents the swine moisture. So from October to April, swine moisture is <coughs> decreasing and temperature is below zero. So the snows are snows are, are freezing. And from May to September, swine moisture is increasing and temperature is above zero degrees Celsius and snows are melting. So this is the only TPE data. And next graph, we compare the TBE data with NASA ASCAP data. So the blue line is a TBE sign temperature, and the red line represents the NASA ASCAP data. So zero means freezing, and about zero means thaw state. So if we compare the graph, from April to October, it's snow up, snows are melting, and from from around October to March, snows are freezing. So based on the graph, we can say the snow freeze from the month of October to April and thaws in May to around October for this station's NSC09. So this is the only uh, only graph for one station. We have so many different stations. We have like 45 stations. We will be comparing the data from those 45 stations with NASA ASCAP data. So also we have a future research because this is a one year long project. So since this is a year long project, in the future we will Trying to figure out the way to compare the NASA ASCAP data and then inside to station data more systematically and by found statistical analysis. We will find trends and kind of find the error between between the inside to measure data and the satellite remote sensing data. Uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, we will also be comparing the NASA ASCAP data with the slow data from European Space Agency satellites. Thank you so much.